2035, a brand new play written for the 2020 Edinburgh Fringe Festival and adapted for radio by Maggie Baring, Emily Browning and Tim Coker. Directed by Simone Hancocks, with music by Maggie Baring. Produced for radio by Tim Coker, with Emily Browning as Selkie Mara, James Gowan as Dr Arlick Mara, Casper Gleave as Disco Boy, Anna Sloan as Huldra, Rosie Pegner as Undine, Don Pritchard as Enki, Scarlett Daniel as Mithra, and Maggie Baring as the voice of the sea. Episode 7 She was going to tell me something. She said... A girl lived in a small seaside village, above white cliffs, below blue sky. The little green cottage where she lived with her mother and father had winding steps down to a small pebbled beach. The girl could always be found by the water's edge. She would lie for hours, humming the song of the sea and circling her toes in the water. The family were poor. The mother was sick and the girl's father struggled day and night to find food for his wife and daughter. The girl was often sent out to find work, food, anything to help them stay afloat. But she could never focus on the task for very long. She was always drawn back to the call of the ocean, ending up knee deep in water every time. Her father would return in the evenings to find her still, sitting in that same spot, her dress filthy, her basket of seafood empty. One evening, the father returned, a knot of fear hard in his chest. The daughter was not home. Don't you get it? She's dead. We're all that's left. But she said... When the girl returned, hours later, her hair soaking wet, she looked unimaginably happy, until her father started shouting. She sat in silence on the tiled floor. Her father, eyes glazed over in a livid rage, called upon the god of the sea. He cursed his daughter and dragged her muddy hair down to the steps onto the water's edge. The girl felt her legs turn to a tail and her neck ripped open, revealing gills. Her father picked up the fish and then threw her into the ocean. Will you shut up? The American took her, deformed her, shagged her, then killed her, okay? We're bloody done for. Alone in the deep blue sea, the girl swam around in circles, calling out for her mother and father, for the sun, for the freedom. Another friendly god looked down on the little lost soul and took pity on her. She gave her the arms and the head of a woman and the ability to breathe on land. Thus, the first mermaid was born. You don't understand. No, for once I do. You're messed up in the head and I get it. She was your girlfriend, but... If you think about it, she was the lucky one. At least she didn't watch death close in on her, feel the oxygen leave her lungs. I mean, it was all done in one smooth... She swam above the waves and returned home. She looked through an open window of the little green cottage. Her mother was lying, cold and still, and the girl but surely justice... Justice doesn't come into it. It can't come into it. We are far beyond that point now. Following the pain of losing her daughter, the mother had killed herself. The smashed bottle of arsenic reflected the sun onto the ceiling. The stars of the night sky projected onto the walls. There is no way. I am just going to sit back. In the lawless chaos that followed, the mermaid was abducted and raped repeatedly by a soldier who videoed the whole thing on a Sony Handycam. Holder, we have no power. We're outnumbered. To try anything would be suicide. Eventually, the mermaid escaped the soldier's clutches and jumped back into the sea. She was free. She picked up a sharp stone from the seabed and slit her wrists, then her throat. There's nothing left to... Surely we can do something. Mitra, please! 
What about stage two? Selkie and Arlik were only chance. She was the only one left, and he was the only capable of saving us. It's over. The gods punished the mermaid for her ungrateful deeds. The cottage was razed to the ground in a freak storm. Her mother's body burned to ash in a fire caused by a faulty iPhone charger. And all their extended family were struck by lightning on their way to a charity fundraiser. But her father survived. He discovered his daughter's rape and sought out the soldier who had violated his daughter. Me through, please. You can't be serious. The human race is done. We did not pass the test. Adapt and evolve, they said. The ice caps are melting, they said. Unite. But we were naive, greedy, selfish. And we have now paid the ultimate price. I remember she said something before... Before... The facility is shutting down. The project is terminated. So you better make yourselves as comfortable as you can in what is left of this world. If there is anything that Selkie did for you, it is to show you that sometimes ignorance is kinder than knowledge. It won't last, she said. Nothing lasts. When she said it, it was as if she... She knew that... It's, it's just... In that moment, looking out at the sea, she really was content. The father kidnapped, imprisoned and tortured the soldier. He told him warped tales of love and suicide, and half suffocated him with plastic bags. seats. We drove it too. It was nip. The new job had a commute. His rationale, spending four hours a day needs style, comfort, top of the range comfort. Style. Because of mind, and in the crisis spent more than he earned. The cull pushed him. Hard. Two kids he got. New girlfriend with another on the way. Mm. 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 He hit them hard. Not even a chance. First breath and... That was hard. But the others... They had potential. It was what it was. I think he used to say that. I, I wasn't like that. In some ways we were very similar, but I didn't share his optimism. The garage was big enough for two cars, but half of it was full of junk. Dad's old lawnmower, some wooden ladders, empty plastic ad blue canisters. The door used to stick or else it would fall down on its own after he'd opened it. He was paranoid it would come down on top of the murk and he'd be driving it out and it would get out a huge, deep scratch into the roof. He had the stick, an old clothesline, to hold it up just in case. He used cheese wire. Well, just wire, I suppose. Do you call it cheese wire? He wound down the two back windows and passed the wire through, securing it to the two metal posts that supported the mechanism either side of the door. He'd got the car just in the right position, with the bonnet poking out so the wire lined up really straight and taut. He'd never been Mr. DIY, but this, 
<laughs> this was a good job. You have to give it to him. You put a brick on the accelerator pedal. I remember seeing movies as a kid when they did that. Neat trick. Must have got the revs right up and kicked it into gear from the back seat somehow. I couldn't quite work out how he managed that. They were holding hands in the back seat. The wire sliced through just above the ribs, above the bump on her. <laughs> really clean. It was a mess, naturally, but the cut, <laughs> the cut was clean. Perfect. Yeah, that's why I said cheese wire, maybe. The baby was still alive inside her when they found them. You could see the head and one little hand outstretched. A tiny finger pointing like that Da Vinci painting. Sliced right mm. through the leather seats, too. Mm. Uh. Michelangelo. 